we will start off with the Utah Utes. Last year, 10-4, and four, made it to a Rose Bowl, won the Pac-12. Uh, honestly, it was the beginning of last season that really hurt the record because they probably should have only had maybe one loss, two losses, somewhere around there. Uh, the loss to Ohio State in the bowl game, if Cam Rising doesn't get hurt, I think there's a chance they could really win that game. Uh, the loss to San Diego State, if they had played Cam Rising for the entire ball game. I think they win that game in regulation and they don't lose it in overtime, et cetera. So I think uh, there's a lot that you can look at from last season and feel really good about, especially coming into this season. 66% returning production here for Kyle Whittingham's bunch. Uh, this is a team that returns quite a bit on offense. 73%. Uh, let's see. Let's go over this. Their win total is nine for this year. Uh, odds to win the conference. Um 2.75 to 1, or plus 275, somewhere around there. And that's a pretty decent odds, pretty decent odds. Projected favorites in nine games, they got five toss-ups this year. Uh, the offensive coordinator, Andy Ludwig, has been awesome since he came back. Uh, and I think he was kind of kind of Derek Mason's downfall at Vandy because Ludwig was at Vandy, and they were doing pretty decent. Uh, remember, I mean, he, he had Vanderbilt in bowl games, like Derek Mason did. So, regardless, last year, Utah... Actually, a better offensive performance than defensive performance. A little strange, right? Uh, number 17 in PPA per drive on offense. Number 33 on defense. Uh, look, this is a well-coached team. Number 25 in penalties per game. Uh, turnover margin was a bit of an issue, but when you get a little more risk-heavy in your offense, you're going you're gonna to have turnovers. That's just bound to happen. Uh, on offense... Rising took over. The offense averaged 39 points per game over the last 10 games. They were number 13 in passing success rate. And they returned the wide receivers, uh, Vele and the tight ends, uh, Queet and uh, uh, Kincaid, Dalton Kincaid. Uh, number 30 rushing success could actually increase with the running backs, Thomas and Bernard coming back, along with definitely a top 20 offensive line. And they could be even better than that. So rushing success rate was number 30 last year. I, I expect it to be a little bit better this go-round. Uh, as far as the defense, we all know what to expect from a Whittingham defense. Six starters gone, but Fillinger and Tafuna, a return to the defensive line. The cornerbacks, Phillips and Vaughn, are great. Linebacker Gabe Reed transfers over from Stanford. The safeties, Bishop and Vaughn, could be ready to turn into stars as sophomores. Like, this is typically your biggest learning curve right here. It's when you show the most improvement, the most growth, is from your freshman to sophomore year. I, I, I think they're going to be awesome. Uh, all Pac-12 cornerback uh, Jatravius Bruton is back healthy as well. Remember, he was really, really good in 2020 and then had to miss last season. He's back again. So uh, defense has star players. They got a lot of good dudes. Top players here, Cam Rising, of course. Thomas, the running back. Uh, you know, the two tight ends. You got the cornerback, Phillips. Uh, Gabe Reed coming over from Stanford. That is a huge deal uh, because he's really going to fill in a hole there. Keys to the season. They were number seven in field position last year. Uh, that is, you need to maintain that. And they've typically been pretty good at that metric. Number 25 in points per scoring opportunity. Number seven in points per play. The offense was lights out last year. And I expect them to be again with Cam Rising. Uh, I know that they are losing, I didn't even put it on here, uh, the linebacker Devin Lloyd. They're losing uh, Tatua. They're losing Nick Ford. They're losing Sewell, etc. Uh, the wide receiver, uh, Britton, like this is, they're losing dudes, but they got guys to replace them. They have built depth. They have developed their players. And I feel really, really good about them. Really good. So good, in fact. Um, oh, I, I put on here, the defense won't be to the highest standards, but they will be plenty good enough to go with that offense. And I said, this is the epitome of physical football or man ball, if you will, because I expect both lines to be pretty, pretty good. I've got them 11 and 1. Now, their win total is 9. I feel good about that over uh, because I think that 9 is the floor. Like, I, I look at this, and yeah, there's like five toss ups, and toss ups to me are games where uh, it's a one possession spread. I think when I look at the schedule, it sets up insanely well for them to. I, I understand I've got them losing at Florida. I got them beating everybody else. 
They got running through the Pac-12. They kind of did that last year because once they got on a roll with that offense, nobody was able to beat them. I think the same thing's going to happen here. I've got them 11-1. and one. I think this is a playoff caliber team. So, yeah, 11-1 and one for Utah. I think that this team is really, really good. Like, really good. Oh, reminder, by the way, if anybody wants to see those spreadsheets uh, that, I, that I have on the screen with me, they're over on the website. You can go check them out over there. Uh, there's a link in the description to that. So, go ahead and check that out. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.